Alrighty, welcome to Amusement Insiders. Today, I'm going to describe the top thing, top 10 things you can do when going to a theme park. If you're going to a theme park sometime soon, sit down, microwave yourself some popcorn um, as we discuss and learn some simple steps to make your trip to a theme park that much more enjoyable. We all know going to theme parks nowadays can be quite the nightmare. Sure, once you're there and in the right mindset, it's one of the best experiences ever, but occasionally it can be a horrendous experience. Well, coming from someone that went to a theme park over 120 times in 2018, I'm here to help make it that much more enjoyable for you, your family, and your friends. Just follow these easy to follow 10 steps to having the best day possible at an amusement park. So, one may ask, what is step number one? Well, step number one is plan ahead. And I don't mean just plan ahead, you know, six months in advance, one year in advance for trips like Disney. I mean plan ahead weather-wise. Now, a lot of you may be going, well, that's not always possible. And I totally understand that. But if planning ahead weather-wise is possible, you're going to want to do it. So, for example, if you have a weekend getaway, planning last minute can be very ideal. You'll be able to avoid weather like I experienced on this trip where 100 kilometer plus hour winds were blowing and blew trees over, fences over, and you know, people away, I'm kidding. But it eventually ended up leading to the park closing, which could ruin a family vacation. So last minute planning is definitely ideal if you're able to do it as you'll be able to avoid weird weather patterns such as this one. So what is step number two? Well, step number two is arrive to the park before opening. Now, this will help in multiple ways. So if you arrive to the park before opening, you'll be able to grab one of the best parking spots right up there at Front Gate. This will help with your family having easier access to the car. For example, if one of your kids or if you want to grab jackets, if it happens to get cold or if it's going to rain or if you need to go grab a picnic basket, it's right up there at Front Gate. You'll also be able to purchase your tickets before the park opens, which will help you beat the lines. This leads me to step number three. If possible, purchase a skip the line pass. If money isn't an, on the luxury end of things at the moment, go to the main rides you want to get done first. Beat the midday massive crowds. The midday massive crowds, you may ask? Well, those usually occur around 12 p.m. Most parks that I've been to around 12 p.m., they get way busier than they are at 10 a.m. People are still waking up, packing their cars, and funneling into the parking lot from 10 to 12, and 12 p.m. is usually when the park is reaching, you know, the crowds it's gonna be at for the rest of the day. Even if it seems like there's large groups of people, don't get worried. Focus on your top three roller coasters or attraction lineups. Once you conquer those, then start hitting up the other attractions. Again, if you're at a park like Disney World, hitting up newer attractions is probably best, or hitting up, you know, Animal Kingdom if that happens to be your favorite, or Magic Kingdom, do it first and do the three popular attractions in those parks first. If you're at Cedar Point, Steel Vengeance, Maverick, um, Millennium Force, you know, those rides do those first as well. Step number four, stay hydrated. Lots of water fountain stops, and beverage stops for the adults, if you know what I'm saying. Don't forget to stay hydrated. It will prevent headaches. Step number five, my favorite. Have at least two meals during your visit. No need for snacks. I always say this to all of them, all my friends, my family. Don't invest in snacks on the trip unless you're packing them yourself. So keeping those in the car will help. If you're family and you're spending the day, well, most theme parks usually offer hard to beat meal passes that can save you money. Avoid the fancy places if you're with kids. Stick to the cheaper chicken fingers and fries. This will benefit you. If you're even more prepared and have a vehicle, having a picnic packed will save you even more money and the long lines to get food. Step number six. If you're looking to stay entertained and keep your family more organized, try and find food and a show. Lots of theme parks have this available. This will help make memories while also acting like a television and keeping the family together and more organized. Step number seven, very similar, make memories. 
Most theme parks have shows or events taking place. When booking your visit, check the park map or website for events and shows. Make sure to at least do one to two during your stay. It's a great way to stay relaxed, catch your breath, sit down, enjoy the show, and interact with your friends, family, and make those everlasting easy memories. This brings me to step number eight. Find those cheaper, unique experiences on the park or in the park, sorry, to experience together. Lots of places have $5 to $10 experiences that you and your family and friends will find amazing. Most parks have escape rooms or VR experiences or the old go-karting experiences that everyone still loves. I still remember some of my favorite things to do at an amusement park were going on the go-karts with my father. I wasn't even a driver, I was just the passenger and it was still one of my most favorite memories from Canada's Wonderland back when I was a kid. Step number nine, stay cool. Remember to keep hydrated and find those indoor experiences or in the summer water experiences. Lots of theme parks have water rides or water parks. Explore the park you're going to and plan for two to three hours in the water park. Some water parks may even have cabana rentals or all day rentals for you to have in and out availability throughout the day. I always suggest the cabana rentals for 80 to $110, you can rent a cabana at your local park and have the security access to a safe, water bottle access, towel access, um, your own private cabana. So if one of the parents wants to relax if they're getting a headache while the others go out and enjoy the park or take turns, swap in and out, or if one of your kids isn't feeling well, you have access to furniture that'll help you relax even more and help you enjoy the day more as well. Even if you have one family member that happens to not be feeling well, you have that access to a cabana at worst case. Water parks are definitely ideal and most water theme parks do have water parks nowadays. This brings me to step 10, the most important one. Make the day all about you and your family and friends. Don't put pressure on the day. Go in knowing the day will be busy and things will be slightly chaotic. I have not been to an amusement park or a theme park or, you know, Disney World or Universal Studios and it hasn't been chaotic. Theme parks are always busy. Go in knowing that and you will be okay. Um, bring maybe some activities for your family to enjoy. So if you want to take an hour break at your vehicle, that will definitely help. Don't forget to pack the Advil, knowing that you know one you or one of your kids may get sick. I always get headaches at theme parks, and I always tell my friends going to theme parks, bring Advil or come prepared. Remember to stay hydrated, that's key. And um, just knowing that the day is going to be hectic as a parent or even as yourself going will help you have a better mindset when you're going into those one hour, two hour lines for a ride. Now, if you're at Disney World, those lines can get three to four hours. So just knowing that as well and kind of keeping your kids preoccupied while you're waiting for lines will help keep the kids calm. Just understand that the theme park will be busy and it's going to be crazy and that's totally OK. Um, don't forget to, you know, have those experiences with the shows. You know, if the day's really busy and the lines are two, three hours, Go enjoy those theme park shows. Go watch the High Divers at Wonderland or the Walt Disney World shows or the Universal shows. Don't forget those fireworks shows that a lot of those massive water um, theme parks put on. You know, if the if the theme park's super busy, spend two to four or five hours in the water park. Go to the wave pool, have that cabana rental. Maybe spend an hour to two hours having a picnic outside of the park. That will definitely help make your day that much more enjoyable. Now. Um, if you guys have any questions that'll help with your day coming up to a theme park, like if you're going to Disney World, Florida, or somewhere, or if you're planning a trip in May, April, June, July, comment down below your questions and I'll try and answer any questions you guys may have about theme parks or how to make your day better. I really hope this top 10 list helped you in some way plan your trip for your family, friends, or even yourself. Again, I'm going to quickly go over it. Stay hydrated. Have two meals a day, do the shows and events at your theme park, and ex go in expecting long lines at your theme park, and your day will be super enjoyable. I promise, it's all about the right mindset. Anyways, hopefully you guys really enjoyed this video. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this video for others to enjoy. 
As always, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Bye.